manifestation is usually taught pretty black and white. We've got the three steps. Ask for what you want, visualize it, write it down, write your affirmations, blah, blah, blah. Step number two is clear the way for it. Let go, let God go and have fun, raise your vibration. And then step three, receive. That all sounds pretty fun and dandy, doesn't it? But what happens when you really want something and it's just not coming into fruition? Nothing you do is working. No matter how many times you do the scripting method, no matter how many times you do the visualizations and change what's on your vision board, it's not happening. I've been there, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with you, I have to reassure you. Because it's so easy to have this experience and then feel singled out by the universe, like I'm being punished. Everyone else can seem to manifest things and get what they want because that's what you see everywhere on social media, right? Just do this three-step manifestation hack and then you'll be a millionaire. Not only are they setting you up for failure and disappointment, but they're also taking the whole fun out of the process. I've had my issues. I have had my things that I've really desperately wanted and just not being able to get to happen in my life. And then I would try to use the manifestation methods to try and help me get there, but it never seemed to work and it just frustrated the shit out of me. My biggest issue that I have with manifestation and the way it's taught is that it forgets a lot of the pre-work in order for the desire to come in. It is a simple process, but it's also not at the same time because there's nuances to it. There's different layers. And also some people are just naturally born with less resistance to a desire. So that person who said they made $1 million in their first year of business, while it may be true, they may just have naturally less resistance around money. Whereas someone who was born up in a different family, different upbringing with different social conditioning, but also being a different gender as well, can play a huge part in the way that manifestation works for you. And it's not that it's harder for you, it's just that you've got to switch your approach to it. If you have a desire that you're struggling to bring into fruition, whether it's money, health, fitness, relationships, happiness, joy, a better lifestyle, this episode is for you. My name is Kirsty. Welcome to another episode of Good Girls in Remission. This is where good girls come to seek repentance for the sins they've committed as good girl. In this whole podcast series, we're collectively coming together as women to clear that good girl conditioning that really limits us and tells us to play it small. In this episode specifically, we're going to look at the pre-work that's needed in order to allow a manifestation to come into your life. When we think about the universe, we've got to think about the word interconnectedness. Nothing is separate, so the thing that might be affecting you financially could also be the reason why your relationships are suffering. Or you might have an opposite situation in which one thing's going really well for you, but then another is suffering. You could be a woman making a lot of money, but you just can't seem to land the right partner, or you just can't seem to get into a healthy weight range. There's a reason for that. So rather than trying to hyperfixate on the one thing that you've been wanting, try to zoom out and take a larger approach, looking at each component of your life and what's missing. We have a few different things that we're going to look at in this episode and the very first thing is going to be your relationship wounds. The reason why your relationship wounds are so important is because they affect your relationship within. We already know that the relationships we have in our life are an external reflection of what's going in internally. If I hate myself or constantly criticize myself, have low self-esteem, I'm going to find that in the people around me. But you see, if this inner relationship wounding is causing me to befriend people who judge me, criticize me, tell me to play it small, don't support my beliefs, do you think that's going to inspire me to want to pursue a new business idea? To want to take the leap and move to a different country? To want to go on dates with men who really love and support me? No. And now because I've got all these people surrounding me, criticizing me because that feels normal to me, they're just reflecting my inner state, that could potentially affect my relationship with health and fitness. I might feel more inclined to eat unhealthy foods as a way to protect myself from the relationships that I've cultivated in my life. Or alternatively, I might actually throw myself into my career and become really financially successful, but I can't attract healthy partners because I still think it's safer for me to be on my own than open my heart up to potentially being hurt again and in circumstances like this we're just lacking trust in the universe so a lot of what we do is a coping mechanism over exercising is a coping mechanism hyper independence in which you don't allow yourself to rely on help on your community is a coping mechanism the same as playing it small to make sure other people aren't offended by your light is a coping mechanism and a lot of this comes from this good girl conditioning that teaches us that we need to be a certain way in order to make other people feel good around us when inside we're actually suffering. Some of the core relationship wounds that we need to look at 
are people pleasing, fear of abandonment and your anxious attachment style. If you have a tendency to people please and you get into a relationship with a man who tests your ability to stay patient in the face of disrespect, that response you have inside of you to just keep quiet and say nothing and just put up with it is usually reflected in other aspects of your life. I always believe that the universe has your back and it's going to keep sending you circumstances that ask you to grow. What we do is when bad things happen, we take it personally and make that a story about ourselves. If it's a bad relationship, we might go, oh, men are trash, or this thing's unfair, or this sucks, or the world is this way. All of those kinds of thoughts are giving your power away. And I know not everyone is gonna be ready to hear that, but this is gonna be the key to your success in attracting what you really want. It's recognizing your own power. You've gotta be able to look at the negative things that happen in your life and make it work for you. So if you were cheated on by a man, how can you make that work for you? Thank God that was the wake up call you needed to recognize how small you were playing, how low your standards were. And ever since then, you now have a clearer head. You now have the ability to focus on your career in the way that you weren't able to before because you were so mentally consumed with how toxic the relationship was. Or if you were fired from a job, how can you make that work for you? Is this potentially opening the way for an even better opportunity to come your way? Don't use the things that aren't working for you as a reason to reaffirm why the world is working against you and start using it to reaffirm why the world is working with you. If you need to, get out a notepad and write down the one thing that's really bothering you or the one thing that still hurts you and counter it with a way that it's working for you. Do this with anything that's bothering you or on your mind. Even if it's something as simple as you got cut off in traffic today and it just pissed you off. That could work for you to wake you up to the shit mood that you've been in. Nothing is an accident. Everything is on purpose. And the more you work through your relationship woundings and you'll heal your relationship within, the more you can actually prepare yourself and clear the channel for what you want to come in. Because even if we look at two things that are seemingly unrelated, it might be your tendency to people please. You might think that that's totally unrelated to the money that you've been wanting to call into your life, but that relationship trauma could be the very thing blocking you from having what you want. I remember having a falling out with a best friend a couple of years ago, and it was a very painful circumstance for me. It caused me a lot of grief because it was also happening at the same time as other things weren't going particularly well in my life. But around the same time that happened, while I still had a lot of anger to move through, I started getting into the best shape of my life. I found the gym, I lost weight, and I got super toned. I started finding my feet again in the career that I wanted, and I published the first edition of my book. I was completely blind to how toxic that relationship was. At the same time that I was going through pain, while also simultaneously having some great things come true for me, she not only showed me very little support, but she actually added to the plate of troubles that I was going through because she wasn't showing up for me in the way that a good friend would. And while I was upset and I felt like the universe was working against me, I'm actually so glad that it happened looking back because letting go of that friendship opened up a whole new set of doors for me. Had I stayed friends with her, to this day, I would have been in a friendship that showed me very little support and was actually incredibly toxic. That is not an energetic match to the life that I have right now and the relationship I have within. That falling out cleared the way for so many better opportunities to come in. I run a program on my website called the Feminine Embodiment Series, and that's where we move through the relationship wounds that hold us back from stepping into our feminine energy. One of my favorite things that we talk about is the way in which our fear of abandonment, fear of being invested in, fear of abundance, all contribute to the ways in which we play it small. And if we keep playing it small, we won't be able to perceive the amazing opportunities that are available to us because we'll be blind to them. So when we talk about manifestation, it's not that we're calling something in because that's implying that it's separate from us. You have to remember that you are an extension of the universe and that you are powerful as you are right now. You're never calling something in. You're making something available to you. Already there. It already exists. You've just got to clear the filters that blind you from spotting those friendships, those financial opportunities, that business idea, whatever it is. And I promise you, when you heal those fears and you work through your people pleasing, your attachment style, that's when so much more of what you want becomes available to you. If you still feel like you've got a lot of past relationship trauma, whether romantically or with a parent, make sure you work through those wounds. And I've got the whole roadmap laid out for you in the Feminine Embodiment series if you want to take your learning that step further. The second thing that you need to look at is your self-concept. This is closely related to what we just talked about with healing your relationship wounds because it's often those stories you tell yourself that affect 
your self-concept. That's the way you perceive yourself and the way that you fit into the world. Human beings need to have a sense of belonging in order to feel like they're a functioning human being. I don't know if you guys have heard of the spiritual teacher Till Swan, but I really like her stuff. It makes a lot of sense. And she says that on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that belonging and community would actually be on top of everything, on top of eating, water, shitting. <laughs> everything. Ask yourself, how do you feel like you belong in this world? What stories do you tell yourself to make sure that you feel like you belong? If you grew up in poverty, do you think you're going to belong by thinking big, by telling people that they're just buying into victim mindset, that they're not as stuck and powerless as they think? No, you're probably going to be met with a lot of criticism. And that criticism is going to make you feel like you don't belong in that community anymore. But what we don't realize is that sometimes that uncomfortable feeling is a good thing. Growth is uncomfortable, but when you grow, you end up belonging to a new community that inhabits a different thought form. Poverty is a thought form. Abundance is a thought form. However, my caveat to this is that Rich people aren't always in abundance mindset, as I've said in another video before, because you can be a rich person who's still scamming people, who's still exploiting people, services, the planet. That's not abundance mindset, that's scarcity mindset. You can be a person wearing a designer outfit, but if your whole paycheck is spent on that, it's not gonna make you a rich person. Looking at the example of going from scarcity to abundance mindset, we can use a feminine energy principle called doing less. I think this one often gets misconstrued because obviously we have bills to pay and if someone just comes online being like, just don't work so hard, just do less. You might be watching this and being like, well, I still have rent to pay. That's a nice idea, but I still have things to do. What it means to do less is to actually spend less energy on the things that are draining you and spending more time on the things that energize you. For example, spending too much time thinking about how an ex-boyfriend from two years hurt you and how you're still annoyed about being single, completely valid but it's still doing too much because it's costing your energy. A really good way that you can just cut it short is by saying to yourself, as soon as the thought comes up, I am no longer available for mistreatment from blah, blah, blah. I'm now only available for good treatment. And that will quickly nip it in the bud. As soon as you feel the negative emotion that arises with a thought or memory, immediately say to yourself, I am unavailable for blank. I am now only available for blank. If you're stressed about not being able to pay the bills, the stressing itself is doing too much. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but tell yourself, I'm no longer available for poverty mindset. I'm now only available for abundance. I've had those experiences too, when you get a bill and you're like, oh shit, that's more than I thought. And you stress a little bit because you're trying to cultivate an abundance mindset. But then this bill comes in and then it makes you feel like you're just taking 10 steps backwards. When the negative emotion arises, that's when you tell yourself, I am unavailable for scarcity and poverty mindset. I am now only available for abundance, love and support. Because stressing isn't going to add value to your life. It's only going to take from you. It's going to drain your energy resources. Spending time worrying about if there are any good men is doing too much. Not your job. Just let it go and go and have fun with your life. Go and spend that energy on something that gives back to you. Go do an exercise class. Go meet up with your girlfriends. Go and do a meditation. Go get a massage. Go for a walk. Do anything that brings you more energy. Or a fitness example, looking at yourself in the mirror and just not really being happy with what you see. Judging yourself, criticizing yourself for not fitting a certain standard. It's doing too much. Say, I'm unavailable for self-criticism. I'm now only available for self-love. Because this mindset shift where you cut energy expenditures on cheap outlets and instead switch it to things that pour back into you is actually going to give you the internal traits that you need to get you to where you want to be. You'll actually develop the resilience that you need to stick through with something. You'll develop the happiness and the open heart that you need to attract that new partner. You'll have access to the creativity now that attracts you the right business ideal, the right business partner, the right mentor. And this access you now have to the new energies of love, openness, trust, faith, support is now altering your whole self-concept so you become a completely new person. That's when you really become unrecognizable. People who are happy always have a different looking face to the ones who aren't happy. You just see it. It's like they have a little softness in their eyes, a little light about them, a little smile. Whereas those with a poor self-concept that consistently attract negative things, they usually have a more despondent look. They're less likely to look at you and go, hi. All those traits that I just mentioned come natural to the feminine energy. That's because we're natural born creators. So manifesting comes easy to us and men have access to this energy too. Where I find that we can achieve more success in attracting something that we really want is when we come from a place of being rather than doing. What the hell does this mean? The old model of attracting what we want is I have a desire, but it's just 
just really hard to get to. So I'm going to push myself as hard as I can against this block, against this resistance to try and get to the other side. And for some people it works, but for other people, I think it leads to burnout. What I've had demonstrated to me as a kid, which I think is actually very similar to a lot of people my age, is that your parents' definition of success was how hard you can stick at something that isn't bringing you joy. Oh, well, this is just the way life is. Just tough it out. Just do what you do and you put your head down and you get through it. More of us are waking up to that and being like, I don't wanna do that anymore. I wanna make income in a way that lights me up. I want life to be easy and fun. But that generation models that idea of no, but it's hard work and it's a struggle and that getting what you want or living the lifestyle that you want isn't fun but to me or to us people who are waking up we might think well then what's the point in getting what we want if the whole time we're suffering to get there I still think success requires a certain amount of sacrifices you've got to sacrifice who you were in order to get to where you want to be but I really don't think it's about like grinning and bearing through something that just plainly isn't meant for you and I love Gen Z's approach to the nine to five if I start at nine, I start at nine. I'm not coming in earlier. If you ask me to attend a meeting at 8.30 in the morning, I'm not going because that's not my contracted hours. I had a similar experience in corporate where the hours were just nine to five. It would get to 5 p.m. and everyone's still sitting down. And because I was new to that experience, I was like, why isn't anyone moving? And I asked one of the girls, I was like, oh, it's five. Like, isn't it home time? And she's like, yeah, but you know, it's just polite to hang around like for another 15 minutes or so. And I was like, 15 minutes? I lived over an hour away from where I work. I want to get home. <laughs> and I'm so here for the disengagement with struggle life. It also reminds me of the Kim Kardashian video when she's like, it's like no one wants to work anymore. No one wants to get off their ass and do any work. And it was just the most out of touch the most disingenuous, the most rude thing that a celebrity could have ever said. It was a deliberate message to try and shame people into working harder for something that doesn't serve them. But that was actually a good sign that we're on the right track, that people are disengaging with struggle, or at least we're questioning what and who we're serving. Is it conducive to a healthy lifestyle? Is it necessary? Is it really serving us? Who Who is it serving? And those kinds of questions are really good because it gets you thinking about what am I living for? Why am I here? Is it worth it struggling all the time for something that doesn't light me up? Is it possible that things can be different? Is it possible that things could be easy? When you come into connection and you clear the way to access your traits of the feminine energy, that's when things get easier. Eating healthy used to be a struggle for me. I'd come home after work and just want to binge on something that tasted good because I was so bored the whole day. I let go of that career. I start prioritizing my health and fitness. Now eating healthy is no problems for me. It actually takes more energy from you to be lethargic, to not want to exercise and move your body. It's a reason why you feel good when you exercise. It's because it's an energy giver. My business is an energy giver. Yes, it takes energy, but it also gives back to me. I love knowing that what I'm doing is actually helping people because then that gives me energy. And the last thing I want to leave you with is that the version of you who is living the manifestation of what you want, it's going to cost you your coping mechanisms. It's going to cost you a limiting mindset. It's going to cost your lack of trust and faith in the universe. It's going to cost your hustle mentality, your negativity, your people pleasing, your playing it small, your gossiping negative things about other people, the friendships that are toxic, because that thing that you want requires a more expanded conscious version of you. If you create a life for yourself based on inauthenticity, it's going to crumble down. And that's gonna be a good thing because it'll just be life in the universe asking you to expand. When you come from a place of authenticity, that's when you come into alignment with something that's really meant for you. You start a whole new movement for what's possible for everyone else. You become a way show off a potential. Just by living in your light, you become the girl who says, hey, this is possible for you. If you're too bogged down with fears of being seen and perceived or judged or criticized, you won't ever get there. If you need help with developing a more confident self-concept so that you can become a better manifester, we are gonna be doing a three-day live series together in which we deep dive into the things that are holding you back from stepping into your authenticity and creating a life that's in alignment with who you are and your vision. You are meant to expand your consciousness. You are meant to have amazing things in this life and it can be easy. And that's what I wanna look at together in the three-day live event. And finally, if you need a peer support group to help you on your journey, the Good Girls Club is free for you to join. And we use an app called Spaces. 
I've just created the group. It's for further learning resources, but you are also free to post in there as well. Ask questions, share with us your accomplishments and just have a good chit chat. Link to all of these resources are below and hopefully I'll see you in my live event. Bye.